Okay, here are the solutions for heat transfer. Using your previous knowledge about heat, why is heat transferred between two objects? So for this, um, heat is transferred from hot to cold, and this hot to cold thing has to do with temperature, not the amount of heat contained inside of the object. So from high temperature to low temperature. That's what heat transfer is. <clears throat> and this heat transfer happens because the object with the high temperature those particles give energy to particles in the uh, low temperature object. So hot particles, high temperature particles have on average, because that's what temperature is, more energy so here, we're going to go over here and talk about it. So for your high temp object, the particles, the molecules, and the atoms have more energy on average. Uh, they collide with the low temp, with the low temperature which is low energy particles when the objects are in contact. When high energy particles hit low energy particles, the energy moves from the high energy particle to the low energy particle in those collisions. And that's going to continue until they have about the same average energy, <clears throat> which is what's happening here for the net flow of heat between the objects to be zero. In order for this to happen, the objects must have equal temperature. Uh, and so what that means is that the particles on average have the same amount of energy. And to be clear, Energy is still transferred between the objects. But the net flow between those objects is zero. And we're really concerned about net flow. They're still in contact. Those particles are still colliding with each other. They're still passing energy back and forth between objects A and B. But the net flow there's not more going from A to B. There's not more going from B to A. They're passing the same amount of energy back and forth because all of those particles have the same average kinetic energy. So describe how two objects in direct contact with each other transfer heat. Draw a diagram. So let's say we have object A. You can draw a better diagram. And object B, we're putting them in thermal contact. And we have some low energy particles in B hanging out. And then in A, we have sort of these high energy particles that are moving all around. And eventually, one of these high energy particles in A is going to hit a low energy particle in B. It's going to make that start to move, and it's going to make that particle uh, in object A stand still. And that little energy transfer is how it happens.
So the high energy particle collides with the low energy particle giving the low energy particle energy. And the hot object has more high energy particles Uh, so that means it gives more energy. When they have the same amount of particles, they end up giving the same amount of energy. All right, three methods of heat transfer. We have conduction. We have convection. And we have radiation. Conduction is direct contact between two substances. Convection is different. This is a fluid, and so air or liquid heats itself as hot air rises or hot liquid rises and cold falls. And what's really, really important about convection is that it's heating itself. When you boil water, convection is that thing rolling around and around and around. But if you put your finger in the water, your finger gets burned because you're touching hot water. Your finger gets burned because of conduction. Convection is how the water itself gets hot. And then radiation, this is light energy heats an object. So what happens with this is you have something and it gets so hot it emits energy as light. So think of your stove when you turn it on or the burner on your stove or a fire. The thing is so hot that it's putting out light energy. And so this light energy goes and it hits a cool particle. Um, and what happens is the light energy gives the cool particle energy. So anytime we have energy being transferred through empty space or through air uh, with light, <clears throat> we're talking about radiation. So, so this is the sun heating anything up, right? The sun's not directly touching something, and there's no air passing between us and the sun, so that's radiation. This is a heat lamp uh, above, above food at any sort of serving station that you have. That is radiative energy uh, in the direction that it's focused. You can notice with those, it's much hotter underneath than it is above because of the radiative heat. Now, if the air above a heating element is hot, that's because a convection current is causing warm air to rise. Again, convection is the object heating itself. And conduction is when we have direct contact between two different substances. So those are the ways that, that, that an object can get heated up. So let's talk about this. You heat your bacon by setting it in a hot skillet. This is conduction. Hot skillet touches bacon, boom, conduction. The hood of your car heats up while sitting in the sun. If the sun's heating up the hood of your car, we are talking about radiation. The hood of your car 
heats up while in the garage because the car's engine is hot. This is kind of a two-phase deal, and I'll draw a picture in a second. So you have, you have conduction when the engine heats air. Air does not have an E in it. Then you have convection And this is when your air circulates under the hood. And then you have conduction again. And this happens as the the air touches the hood. Uh, so, a rudimentary drawing of this, let's say we have the hood, and then we have, I'm not great at this, uh, we have the engine underneath the hood. So, we're going to get a conduction current as the hot air rises and the cool air falls. So, we have conduction here with the air, no, sorry, I, I apologize, we have convection here with the air, but at these two places, the hood getting hot and the air getting hot, we have conduction because there is contact between those two different substances. It is a complicated thing. But here's what we're going to do. I want you to know the complicated thing. But if it's ever, what's the one word answer? If that fluid is involved, we're going to call it convection. Um, it's kind of a cheat. But if that's happening, we're going to say that we are utilizing convection to have the engine heat the hood. If there's going to be a fluid mediator between those two things, in this case, my two things are the engine and the hood, and the fluid in between them is the air, if the air is carrying heat from one object to another, that's gonna be convection. Heat from an underwater volcano causes the water at the surface to boil. So we would say that this is convection. Even though in reality we have the underwater volcano, we have the water, right? And so we have the convection current, but here this water is heated by conduction, and then, well, the water at the top only gets heated by convection because it's moving up and down. Anytime convection uh, happens, that happens because fluids are moving. The pot gets hot while sitting on a stove. This is conduction. Those things are in contact. Broccoli floating in a pot of water on an electric stove is heated. So here is convection. So the water carries heat. From the stove to the broccoli. Right, so the water getting hot from the stove is conduction, but the water taking the heat to the top is convection, and then the broccoli getting hot is conduction because it's touching the water. But because the water is the thing carrying the energy, we're gonna say it's convection. Rising hot air causes turbulence in an airplane. That is convection. Talking again about that fluid movement. <clears throat> A thermometer placed in the sun reads 100 degrees. This is radiation. When the sun is involved, we've got radiation. A thermometer in the shade reads 85 degrees. This is conduction. The thermometer touches the air. The air is 85 degrees. And that makes the thermometer read 85 degrees. The ground heats up during the day. Well, the sun is what heats that up, so we've got radiation. The fireman touches a doorknob to see if there's a fire on the other side. 
conduction. A steak is cooked underneath a broiler. A broiler is that hot thing and it's underneath, so it's not going to be convection because that hot rises. What's going to happen here is radiation. Pig is roasted over an open flame. We've got all three. But what we could really say is radiation plus complicated convection where you have the hot fire warming the air, air circulating warming the pig. Um, but it's radiation and then convection. A snake can sense a warm mouse against the cold ground. I'm going to say that's conduction. Using your knowledge of heat transfer, explain how a greenhouse lets heat into warm plants but doesn't allow it out. Draw a little picture for this. For greenhouse, it's clear, right? So we have the sun. The sun is letting radiative energy in. Uh, so the sun is letting radiation in. That radiation heats up the plant. There's our plant. And as the plant gets hot, and as the air in here gets hot, the hot air rises. So we have convection, but it can't get out. So we have hot air rising and not getting out because it's a glass building. So that hot air is trapped. We get a conversion of heat from radiation to actually you know, getting an object hot, but that hot air can't get out, so it's trapped. Which method of heat transfer is most efficient? Conduction. For conduction, we have less heat loss to the environment. If you had like a hand warmer, the little things that get hot, and you grab it with your hand and put your hand all the way around it, your hand will get warm by conduction and it's touching all of it. But if you held your hand above it, uh, the hand warmer would heat the air too, so convection wouldn't be as helpful as direct conduction. That's what we're going for with that.